reverse. Does the old account want to settle? Two 
and water. We'll do all three verses.
All right. Now we're going to go to prayer requests, unspoken. Okay. And again, if you have an unspoken prayer request, you can put that in, in the comments there on Facebook. All right. Specific prayer requests. Please be praying for those that do have medical uh, issues and, and uh, medical uh, events, procedures, appointments, evaluations uh, coming up that the Lord would uh, have his hand upon that situation, that the doctors would have wisdom uh, and know what they need to do to be able to uh, treat these folks. Uh, we have some folks that, uh, if you would be praying for, that uh, are uh, pregnant, <clears throat> that uh, their pregnancies would go well, uh, that mom and babies would be be well also. Okay. Spoken prayer request. Yes, sir. Okay. Pray for daddy. He's at work. All right. Yes. Please be praying for a, 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 a preacher that's been a blessing to me. Uh, Brother Sammy Allen uh, from Resaca, Georgia. Uh, they would have uh, twice a year, they would have camp meetings up there. And when we lived in Georgia, it was a blessing to be able to jump in the car and just run down uh, to the camp for the meetings. So he is in the hospital. Uh, he's been battling pneumonia for some time. And so he's in the hospital with pneumonia. And uh, now it almost goes without saying, of course. Uh, COVID-19 also, so we prayed for him uh, for his recovery. Uh, we have a praise, uh, another preacher friend of ours that uh, uh, was uh, in the hospital with that for some time on a respirator for three weeks. He is uh, not only out of the hospital, he is back at it, so we praise God for that. So we know that uh, uh, it's not a death sentence. God is still the great physician. All right, any other? Uh, I'll add to the pregnancy list. Uh, one of my coworkers uh, found out he was having a baby. Well, his wife's having a baby. Um, <laughs> and they found out with the, doing, with the blood test, they found out that they're having a baby. Okay. So, uh, this will be his third baby. Well, bless him. God loves him. That's it. it it's going to be his third daughter. All right. We'll, we'll include them uh, in those prayers. Yes, ma'am. Um, for a friend of ours, Alyssa, that's pregnant, she went in the hospital with preeclampsia. Um, should hopefully be discharged soon, but she'll be out of rest here. Okay, a friend who's pregnant, uh, put in the hospital with preeclampsia. Hopefully we'll be released soon, but we'll be on bed rest for the duration of the pregnancy. So just pray for this one uh, as well. Uh, anybody else? All right, if not, uh, we're going to pray for these requests. And uh, we'll pray for the offering. And if you're not able to be here in person, but you still want to give tithe and offering, you can do it through the P.O. Box. I've not given that address in a while, so let me give it to you now. It is uh, Grace Baptist Church at P.O. Box 233, Dade City, Florida, 33526-0233. All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight with these praises, and we are so thankful that you are a God, who hears and answers prayer, that you bless your children beyond measure. You and you alone are worthy to be praised, and we do praise you, not for the things that you've done for us or given us, but simply because who you are. Now, we do come to you with prayer requests, and we ask that you would work in your will and your way to answer these. Lord, uh, we know that folks are facing a lot of different issues, and sometimes it can be overwhelming. I just ask that you would help us to stand still and watch you work in these situations. Now, Lord, we do pray for the offering tonight, that you would accept it from a, 
a grateful and a joyful heart, and that it would be used for the furtherance of the gospel. And we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Turn to 1 Corinthians. Uh, which chapter? 13. Chapter 13, that's right. The love chapter. So, I tell you, the song service tonight, I don't think that was uh, necessarily by accident. Uh, we are talking about the showers of blessing. And I don't know about where you are, but we are getting showers of blessing uh, tonight. It is coming down. As some people would say, it's an old-fashioned toad strangler. And so, uh, just be praying for those that have to be out in it. Uh, if you don't have to be out, I wouldn't go out. All right. And while the girls were singing, I went and sat with some of their children. And I got an opportunity to look at... Uh, the Facebook, and we had one comment that they uh, thank God for their faith and their salvation. And uh, I, I echo that. All right, we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, again, the love chapter. And so I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the portion of 
this uh, chapter that we're using for this series. And I believe tonight will probably be uh, the last night of this series, but really that remains to be seen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1, Paul said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me little or nothing. Now, in verse 4, we transition and we start looking at the attributes of love or, as it's written here, charity. Verse 4, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. All right, that's the end. And just a reminder in case this is the, if you're watching online and this is the first one you've caught, uh, first lesson on this that you've caught. Remember, in chapter 12, Paul was going over the different gifts uh, that God gives to his children. And so that's why he starts out with uh, chapter 13, talking about speaking in tongues, which is one of the gifts, uh, prophecy, understanding mysteries, knowledge. These were gifts, and Paul's saying, listen, you can have all the gifts that God gives to his children, but if you do not have charity, uh, it profiteth you a little, which is uh, something we have to be careful with. Now, I have said in past lessons that unless you're saved, you are not equipped to truly love. We are told in the epistle of 1 John that God is love. And that when we are born into God's family, that means when I, when I was born again, born from above, then was I equipped to truly love. Before that, the, the, the best thing I had was lust, okay? And so now that we're a child of God, uh, these attributes of love should be active in our life. All right, who wants to tell me how far we got last week? Believeth all things. Believeth all things, which is the second attribute in verse 7. So, it looks like we have four more attributes, and uh, last week, y'all went through these really quick, and so, uh, like I say, I anticipate this being the ending uh, of this series, but I'm excited for the next series, so, uh, but we got to get through this one first. We've got to finish what we started. Okay, so last week, it was uh, believeth all things, so that leaves us with hopeth all things, endureth all things and then charity never uh, never fails so that's actually just three <laughs> somebody miscount all right hopeth all things charity or love hopeth all things what do we what is what is Paul saying hope has an optimistic outlook on the future. Apostle Paul, where are you today? Amen. So many people are pessimistic. They see what's going on, and listen, I know 
what's going on in the world today, I would not want to face what we are facing without knowing Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Amen. And you, you had something. Yes, um, a feeling of trust. A feeling of trust. Okay. So a positive outlook. And that's not a positive outlook that's like, you know, I'm just trusting that the winds are going to blow right and, and, you know, no, that's trusting in God, having an optimistic outlook. And yours was? Was a feeling of trust. And so, like, with charity being relationships with other people that... You, you know, you hope and, and you trust and you're positive that what they're saying is true, that um, you can believe, you know, you're hopeful for their outcome, you're hopeful that, you know, things are true, um, and you're not, you know, being a pessimist about it. Okay. Or, you know, doubtful. Okay, and one of the things that Vanessa said was that, and it's true of all of these attributes, and I may not have uh, stressed it enough during this series, but it's about our relationships with others, right? I mean, uh, in Sunday school, we're looking at the fruit of the Spirit, and there are nine uh, components of the fruit of the Spirit. It's one fruit, but nine different elements. And it's interesting, when you look at those, three uh, manifest themselves inward more, Three manifest themselves upward more between my relationship and the Lord's, and three manifest themselves outward, which is my relationship with others. And so when we're looking at this and we're thinking uh, that charity hopeth all things, you know, um, one of the things about being saved and being a child of God is that God expects us to serve Him. God expects us to uh, tell others about Him, about His saving grace, and to be His uh, ears and eyes, hands and feet here on earth to carry out His will. And so our relationship with others, you know, if you're a pessimist, don't come to me and try to tell me how great things are for you. If you're a pessimist, you know, that's one of the reasons that I believe the Bible teaches eternal security, meaning once saved, always saved, um, because the Lord wants me to go out and tell others about him. And if I'm not 100 percent sure that I'm saved, how am I going to be of, of use to others? Uh, and so it's the same thing here. Hope with all things. We can trust God to do what he said he would do. We can have 100% confidence in that. And then, in my relationship with others, I want, I want to believe that when somebody tells me something, that it's true. I want to be able to trust them. All right, anything else on this? Did you have something else? Anybody else have any comments? Wow, it might even be a short service tonight. We got through that one lickety split. All right, so the next one endureth all things. All right, who wants to tackle it? I'll do it. So I think of the first thing that comes to my mind is wedding vows. You know, when it says, uh, you know, during richer before for sickness and hell so that be part so when I think of that I think of how it endures how a marriage will last forever until one dies you know and so yeah I think everyone who's married can agree I mean, unless you just got married but I think everyone can agree that uh, marriage does take work and it's not easy um, all the time all the time right That's all right. the time and so there are times when it's it would just be easier just to throw in a towel and say, you know what, I'm done. You know, um, you're right. 
when you think about endureth all things and you think about uh, the wedding vows, those certainly go hand in hand because that's one of the things the wedding vows are, are, are talking about. You know, when life's good and when life's grand and everything's going your way, uh, you know, but the other side of that, when life isn't grand. And, you know, I don't know of anybody that can tell me, look me in the eyes and say, you know, preacher, I've never had a negative experience in my life. Well, I may know some people that would look me in the eyes and tell me that, but I wouldn't believe them, right? Because, uh, especially when you get older and you've experienced uh, so much of life, you realize that there are things that you have no control over, right? And, and so endureth all things. What else? Yes, ma'am. I think of the flip side of that. Um, when you've done the things that we've already talked about, investing in your relationships, whether with your spouse or even with um, friends, that when the hard times come, your love endures because you've put in the work already. So you're able to rely on that relationship. And you, like, if you don't talk to somebody for a very long time, and um, you're able to pick up the phone and pick up where you left off, or you have a hard time, you can still count on them because you put in the investment in that relationship. So they're still there for you. So when uh, Nathaniel and I were talking about the wedding vows, that's almost talking about all the external things, right? that the, all the external pressures that are put on a marriage, sickness, right, um, wealth, you know, financial issues, those are external. But Valerie, what you're talking about is internal between the partners of the relationship, whether it's husband, wife, uh, friends, uh, even siblings, or even parents, right? Love, when you love somebody, um, it endures, yes. So I was was struggling with what the difference was really between beareth and enduring. Mm -hmm. So I Googled the definitions. Okay. And so to um, bear all things is to carry or support. So you think of if you're carrying something, if you're bearing something, you know, maybe you're taking it from point A to point B. Well, for endure, it says suffer or remain in existence. So it's something, um, suffer patiently or remain in existence. And so um, I think of that as more a long-term type of commitment, a long-term um, painful time that you are enduring, whether it is a you know, a separation, whether, um, you know, like between friendships because of time or, or space or whatever, it's not something that's necessarily quick, but um, is long-term and is, is more of a painful situation. And, and you think about those with medical conditions and how, um, you know, the, like the, the person we know whose wife passed away, um, who she, she was young, but they endured um, for several years until she passed away because of medical condition. So. You know, I, I, ha I, I have personal experience, people that I've had in my life that I've been blessed with that are a textbook example, if you will, of this. My good friend who, uh, Served in the military, um, and you know I I appreciate what uh, the family of our military have to go through because of her and what she had to deal with while he was deployed, uh, while he was away, um, after he got injured, and the the medical uh, side of that. You know, living at the hospital, but trying to trying to take care of family at home and trying to work, and you know that's not easy. And, and I know that there have been cases where 
uh, the spouse has thrown up their hands and said, that's it, I quit. And they walk away. They, you know, they might make the comment, I didn't sign up for this. You know, this isn't what I had in mind. And then I think of the one uh, lovely, lovely woman of God who prayed for over 20 years for the salvation of her husband. And, you know, and there are times when uh, in a marriage, the one may be saved and living for the Lord, and the other uh, not only not saved, not living for the Lord, but the opposite of that being antagonistic towards the one that is striving to live for the Lord. And so that's another uh, situation and, and endurance. Yes, ma'am. Also on that, um, for those that have endured, you know, wrongdoing through, um, I mean, we know through DNA testing and stuff, there's been people that have been wrongly uh, put in jail yes. for crimes they didn't commit. And so whether you're a friend, whether you're... Um, you know, a loved one, but you know, for that person in jail, they are having to endure for, for punishments or crimes that they did not commit. And you know, by the time they get out, people could forget that they were supposed to be innocent, or right? Right, and so also for the people, you know, on the outside, I think that also goes back to hope like hoping, trusting, believing that the person you love, the person that you know them and believe their their innocence. You know, that's one of the things we have to remember that nowhere in Scripture does it say that when you are born again into the family of God and you take Jesus as your Savior, that life thereon, you won't have any issues. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that. We tend to forget that. Um, but and unfortunately, there have been folks that have been uh, wrongly convicted and put in prison. And some they had to go their entire uh, term before they were released. Others have uh, been exonerated. But yes, that that's endurance. That's endurance. And so when we think about enduring. Something else that uh, what you said made me think about is uh, when a hurricane comes, right? And you do all the preparations that you can do. You've, you've uh, boarded up the windows. You've tied everything down outside that can't be put inside. Um, you know, you hunker down. If you have a boat and it's in the water and it has to stay in the water, you do what you can, and the storm comes, and everything has to endure that storm. The, the boats on the water, the, the, the structures that are secured the best they can, they have to endure that. Now, that storm's going to pass. And sometimes in life, we are hit with major storms. You know, forget it, Category 5, Category 6. Right? That storm comes, and some people might say, well, it's really not my storm, it's your storm, and I don't have to ride this storm out with you. So, going back to charity does that. Charity does that. Years ago, years ago, back in... Um, 60s and 70s, uh, there was a, an evangelist named Lester Roloff. He had a group of uh, homes in Texas and I think uh, one in Mississippi. And God used him to see a lot of lives transformed. A lot of souls saved. And he was being persecuted by the government. He, he uh, was put on trial uh, because they wanted him to take certain licensing and, and he said no God is the one who ordained this ministry we're not getting licensing from the government licensing permission we're not doing it and a lot of preachers 
including my predecessor here at Grace Baptist Church, uh, also who was my father-in-law. He went to Texas, and he uh, was personal friends with uh, Brother Roloff, and he was there to support him. Um, you know, there have been times when other people have turned away. So charity endureth. You know, yes, sir. I think of uh, also like how she was talking about prison because when she was talking about that, my first thought was uh, Joseph, and uh, I think because you read you read like towards the end, uh, he told his brothers that uh, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Amen. I think. You know, I don't think it was at that moment he realized that. I don't think he just thought of that. I think ever since uh, he threw, they threw him in, in the dun or in the pit to sell him, pit, yeah. that that was constantly on his mind that no matter what is going to happen, I'm going to stay faithful to God because I love Him, and that, I think that's why we never read that he complained, that he questioned God. I mean, he might he might he might have, you know, being human, but. I think because of that mindset of, hey, God knows, God's here for me, He loves me, so I'm going to continue loving Him, serving Him, no matter what state I'm in. Yeah, thank you for that. That is a great example from God's own word. Uh, if you couldn't hear Him, He was talking about Joseph and about his reaction. You know, his brothers took him and threw him in a pit. First, they were going to kill him, right? Then they said, no, 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 that's too good for him. We're going to sell him into slavery. And when we look at Joseph and all his ups and downs, and Nathaniel's right, we don't read in God's word where, uh, where Joseph badmouthed God and, you know, raised an accusing fist or anything, that he was faithful. And he endured that. And at the end of Genesis, we see where uh you know, Joseph was able to bring his dad and his brothers uh, to Egypt, and God used him and his wisdom to preserve their life. And then after dad died, his, his mean brothers looked at each other and said, uh-oh, we're in for it now. You know, he's going to kill us. He's going to take his revenge. He only withheld it because dad was alive and for dad's sake. But uh, Joseph... Told him, no, no, no. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for, for good. That is enduring. And he did it because he loved God. And then he, he saw how God was able to use him. And even though his brothers did what they did to him, he loved them yep. as well. All right, anything else? Uh, endureth all things. Okay. All right, we're going to go to the last one. Here we are. We've been looking for verse 8. Charity never faileth. Okay, now that's a, that's a broad spectrum. Vanessa, you want to get us started? Okay, so I kind of sort of had something else for under earth, but then I realized it was more like doesn't fail um, type of thing. But um, something that comes to mind, which could be enduring or doesn't fail, but is when you have someone that um, you love, you know, charity, and they have done the crime that they've been accused of or something, that doesn't mean you stop loving them. Amen. Amen. That doesn't mean you stop loving them. And sometimes you can have to endure like painful times, either, you know, and it doesn't necessarily mean something criminal. Right, you know, right. But um, sometimes you might have to endure because of a sin in their life and then having to overcome, either get um, counseling or some type of, um, you know, treatment or something um, to go through um, what they need to to no longer be living in their sin. Um, that doesn't mean you stop loving them, but it's a process, not just for the person that's going through it, but for the family on the other side, for the friends on the other side. Right. 
and, and it's natural that a lot of these things are going to overlap. It's, it, it's very natural for that. But if you could hear her, uh, she was talking about uh, love never failing. You know, we talked about enduring for somebody who is wrongly convicted and, and put away. But what about that friend or family member who commits a sin, uh, whether it's a violation of the law or not, but let's say that they, they go to prison because they violated the law. Uh, you don't stop loving them because they ended up in prison. You don't. All right, if it's not something illegal that would get them thrown in prison, uh, simply a sin, I say simply a sin, not, not minimizing sin, but uh, they, they, they commit a sin uh, and you, you forgive them because if you're right with God, you have to forgive them. Forgiveness is not a choice, it's not a feeling. You must forgive. But when you forgive, you have to love them. You, no, you're not endorsing their sin. You're not saying what they did that was sinful is okay or acceptable. Because God doesn't do that. Think about it. God loved you while you were in your sin. God loved me when I was in my sin and I didn't care about God. I didn't care about other people. All I cared about was satisfying myself. Um, but God loved me. I repented of my sin. God forgave me of my sin. God did not say, that's it, you had one chance. You blew it. He doesn't do that. And you say, yeah, but he's God. Absolutely, he is God. We are not God. We are imperfect humans. And that's why we, we really should understand the need for a never-failing love for others. Okay? Anybody else? Anybody else with input before I go further in this? I see he's getting his thoughts together. Yeah. I don't know, like, uh, oh, I don't know, like, I think, uh, yeah, like, I guess this is the first thing that comes to my mind is I think of uh, Jonathan and David because, you know, you read in the Bible how their love was so much for each other that, I mean, they, they thought that they were relatives, you know. That's yeah, what I yeah. They were, they were brothers. Yeah. Closer than brothers, you know. And yeah. here it is that Jonathan, uh, I, I know Jonathan found out that they were supposed to be king, you know, and take place of Jonathan's place, even though that was Jonathan's rightful place. But Jonathan realized that, uh, that well, a couple things. One is he loved David so much that, I don't think Jonathan cared about being king if David was going to, you know, like, if he, right, I, right. I think that he didn't really care because he knew David would be a great king, you know, and so I don't think that Jonathan, it didn't bother Jonathan at all, you know, I think he was actually excited for David, um, and, and so much that he loved him so much, even though, you know, here, here in today's society, you know, it might not be kingship, but it might be a position and job, like, hey, I was here longer than you, and how did you get it? And we get jealous of them, and so yeah, we stop yeah. liking them, you know, or, or something like that. And, and we can get to the same point as Saul, where, hey, you know what, I'm going to be out to destroy you. I might not kill you, but hey, let me rub some, I got some dirt on you, because I know, I know how close we've been, and I got some dirt, and I can destroy you. Right. And you don't get that position. And so, but I think Jonathan, again, loved David so much that he didn't let that get to his head. And he said, you know what, no matter what, if you're king, you're king. I'm, you know, I, I'm still going to love you, and I know you're still going to love me. And I don't want, I don't want this to decide our, our factor for each other. So no matter what, let's just stay close. And we see that that's what happened. You know, Jonathan sticks up for David. Right. Saves him. 
Right. And then you see that it went both ways when David goes to Mephibosheth. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was, when he brought them up, I was thinking of Mephibosheth. Yeah. You know, if, if you're not aware, uh, after, after uh, Jonathan and his dad uh, and his brothers are all killed, uh, David says, you know, is there anyone of the house of Saul that I can show some kindness to? Now, if you remember, Saul tried killing him because... God chose him to be king, right? And not just once, not just twice, but he pursued him to try to kill him. And I think David is a great example of this charity that doesn't fail because he says, hey, is there anybody of the house of Saul that I can show kindness to? And they said, yeah. Yeah, Jonathan has a son, Mephibosheth. He's crippled. And, the, and now David is king and he sends a message and says, Mephibosheth, come, be my son. Put your feet on my table. Woo, I get excited about that. I do. There's a, there's a great song uh, that I've been trying to work on to sing eventually one day, but uh, Mephibosheth, uh, that's, a, that's a great story. And uh, that is a great example again of love that doesn't fail. Anybody else? It's, I mean, it's also the example that like David is a really good picture of a lot of the other charity words. Yes. Because he was trying, to, they tried to kill him multiple times. But he forgave, obviously, because he, he, if he hadn't forgiven Saul for trying to kill him, he wouldn't want to show kindness towards his family. That's right. That's right. You know? And so it's just love never faileth. Like, true charity means that no matter what you do to me, if I say I love you, I'm going to love you. All right, say that again louder. True charity, so charity of God, no matter what you do to me, if I have said, I, I love you, I'm going to show you the love of God, it means that no matter what you do to me, I'm still going to love you. Okay. So those of you uh, watching online, I hope you heard that. And, and that, is, that is it in the nutshell. When we love somebody, our love should be unconditional. God's love for us is unconditional. And so, what does, it, what does that mean? That means I love you regardless of how you treat me. I love you uh, regardless of how many times you do me wrong. I love you, period. I love you even if you say I don't want your love. I love you if you go out of your way to try to make me to not love you. All right, so here's the summary on these lessons. Again, back at verse 4. Charity suffereth long. When you love somebody, and this is where, uh, like Vanessa said, you see so much overlapping. You know, it suffereth long, is kind, envieth not, vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, Seeketh not her own, not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, and lastly, charity never faileth. Now, we love because God first loved us. But one thing we have to remember, and I'm sure uh, if you're over the age of, well, kids these days seem to say it younger, but if you've ever fell in love with somebody, if you should realize that you didn't fall in love. We don't fall in love. We can fall in a hole. The talented among us can fall upstairs, right? But we don't fall in love. We choose 
to love. We choose to love. And so, unlike the gifts that were mentioned in verse 12, you're not going to necessarily have all the gifts. That's not how God works. You might have one gift or two gifts or five gifts, whatever. But when it comes to the characteristics, the, the 16 that we've looked at, the 16 characteristics of love, you will have all of these. You will have all of these. If the love that you have is of God, then you will have all of these characteristics. All of them. Right? I mean, uh, one of the biggest challenges for us demonstrating these characteristics of love is the flesh. It's the flesh and the old Adamic nature. If you are born of God, if you are saved, you are indwelt with Holy Spirit, and you have a divine nature that comes from God but you still have the old, original, sinful nature that you were born with. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, I die daily. He dies to self. You and I have to die to self. Now listen, if you were saved and you find yourself not manifesting these uh, traits of love, you need to ask the Lord to help you with that. And you need to ask the Lord to show you why. And I, I'm going to dare say that the reason why is the old nature, which often manifests itself in the flesh. And you know how you overcome that old nature? It, it's not by trying hard, because trying hard doesn't do it. This is how you overcome that old nature. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We have to spend time in God's Word. You know, before I was saved, I had a very bad temper. I would blow up. It was almost an explosive temper. And, uh, you know, I might uh, demonstrate my displeasure. And in part, that's what I was taught. As a child, no, somebody didn't say, now listen, this is what you do. You blow up and you puff up and you have a tantrum, which when you lose your temper, that's what you're doing. You're, you're throwing a tantrum. Somebody didn't say this is how you do it, but that's what I learned by observation. And when I got saved and I learned to die to self, and it's not a one-time deal, Paul was right. He said he dies daily. Sometimes I have to die multiple times a day because that old nature likes to be resurrected. So you have to die to self and you have to feast on God's word because that is how uh, the change is going to take place in your life. I didn't change myself. I can't. And to be quite honest, so many times I didn't want to. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, thinking about what you said, if you don't have it, and how further on it talks about when you were a child, you think as a child, and That's right. you think about a lot of the, the love or the lack thereof, is because so many people are not mature in real life, let alone their spiritual life. And the verse she's talking about is in verse 11, which says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And so, yes, I know my, my tantrums when I would lose my temper was a fact uh, contributed by my immaturity physically and definitely my immaturity spiritually, okay? And so the way we learn these things is by spending time in God's word, spending time in prayer. If you're saved, there is no reason you should ever act in a mean, ugly, or nasty fashion to anyone. 
to anyone. Somebody gets in your face and starts yelling at you, cusses you, cusses your mama. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. I know, I know some people say, well, you ain't a man if you let somebody do that to you. Well, you know what? That, I don't find that in God's word. Right? Jesus said, turn the other cheek. So, uh, this concludes our series on biblical love. Anybody else have anything else they want to add as we uh, put this to bed, as they say? And uh, get ready for the next series starting next week. No, nobody else. It's just it's challenged on how to make sure you love like you should. It is a challenge, and not once during this series did I say it was going to be easy. Because <laughs> it's not. You know, I have good days when it's easy for me to manifest the uh, traits that God wants me to. And there are days when, uh, if I go out in public, I come home and I'm embarrassed by my behavior. Nobody else might not recognize anything that I've done that, that I would consider wrong. They might say, eh, you know, you're, you're just being human. Uh, sometimes we use that as an excuse. I think a little bit way too much. All right. We're going to go ahead and stop. Uh, that concludes, again, this series on biblical love. And we're going to have a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll be finished. Our Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much uh, for your word and that you've given it to us through holy inspiration and that you've preserved it for us in the King James Bible and that we're able to open these pages and we're able to glean from it that which you have for us. And it's not just old-fashioned, but it's very applicable for today. Father, I ask you would help me to meditate on the things that I've taught and help the students do the same, and that we would allow it to affect our lives, and that we would be able to be used of you uh, better than we have before. And Lord, I, again, thank you for the evening that we've had. I ask that you would dismiss us with your blessing. Give everyone safety as they go home. And we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.